Good afternoon, Rotary Club of Cincinnati. So glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for guests and friends, and especially those of you who are online joining us via Zoom. We will have a video of the national anthem, after which we will have the invocation and four-way test by Molly Rydell. Good afternoon, Club 17. Please join me in prayer. Almighty Father, thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us. We're filled with gratitude for our many blessings. Thank you for sending our speaker our way today, Mr. Brandon Reynolds, who has taken time from his busy schedule to be with us. And thank you for the lunch we are about to enjoy, while others who are less fortunate than us may not have a meal today. Please continue to guide us as we always strive to help others in our community and around the world. Grant us wisdom, charity, and love for all humankind. May your blessings rest upon all of us, Almighty Father, as we seek to serve in your name. Amen. Amen. And now let's recite the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Next, we will have uh, prospective members and visitors welcome an introduction by Brett Labar, followed by our meeting sponsor, Journey Advisory Group with Eric Petway. So we have two guests with us today that we'd like to welcome. And first is Laura Moschel. And Laura is part of the Journey Advisory Group. Laura, if you could stand up. If, and it's great to have you here today and great for Journey Advisory to be sponsoring the meeting. Thank you. And our other visitor today is Reed Cartwright, who a number of our members know. Reed is Angie Fisher's husband, and both Angie and Reed are good friends of Brandon Reynolds, our speaker today. Welcome, Reed. Well, we're very happy to sponsor today's uh, meeting. Uh, as you have, you saw probably a little uh, view from our point of view last time on the panel. So uh, two things, we wanted to just tell you a little bit about our firm and then invite you to the Rotarians at Work, which will be a week from today in Covington. And um, I'll cover that a little bit later, but Journey Advisory Group provides investment management and financial planning services to, to individuals, families, and organizations nationwide we're an independently owned SEC registered investment advisor with headquarters in Covington, as well as offices in Cincinnati Blue Ash, Temple, Texas, and Sacramento, California. Um, <clears throat> we deliver independent thinking and hands-on active support to clients throughout life's journey. You can learn more about us through going to the website journeyadvisory.group. You can also, many of you stop by the table, we'll be there as well after the meeting, and uh, make sure you spin the wheel for prizes. Um, the next step is please sign up for the Rotarians at Work. We're going to have experts. Our CEO is going to speak about uh, our firm as well as I'll speak about the investment outlook. We're having planners discuss estate planning, financial planning, and insurance, and uh, we'll also have a meal and to have a tour of our offices. We're we are excited to invite all of you to attend. We can accommodate up to 10 um, Rotarians, and we're excited to host next Thursday. And last but not least, uh, you can also talk with Laura. She's our chief of staff, and she's the integral part of our firm. Again, thank you for your uh, opportunity to support Rot Rotary, and uh, we look forward to the uh, speaker today and learning, telling you more about Journey Advisory Group in the future. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Eric. Next, we will have new member introductions. We have two. Dan Long will introduce Tracy McGuire, and Julie Poyer will introduce Shannon Hero. 
After the introductions, Anthony Ricciardi will give us some information regarding Rotarians at Work and our next week's meeting. Thank you, President Melinda. Very pleased to welcome Tracy McGuire to the Rotary Club. Tracy moved to Cincinnati from Santa Fe, New Mexico in June of 2020. Her relocation happened because of the genealogy research she did over the last few years that uncovered her ancestral roots in Claremont County. She didn't know anyone in the city before she arrived, but has found everyone so welcoming that her move has been a great experience. I'm sure very much in due to the Rotary Club. Absolutely. Absolutely. She loves her new adopted home. She was born in the atomic city of Los Alamos, New Mexico, thanks to her dad's employment on the Manhattan Project, and lived most of her life in New Mexico. She has four children and 2.9 grandchildren. That's 2.9, <laughs> number three to arrive next week. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Tracy is a CPA and has operated her own public accounting firm for more years than she chooses to share. <laughs> She continues to work with her clients in New Mexico while developing relationships in the Cincinnati area. Her expertise is in tax planning and compliance, as well as small business support. Nowadays, she works primarily with real estate investors, providing them with financial and business strategy guidance. Please welcome Tracy McGuire. And just a very quick plug for the uh, Membership Development Committee. As you know, I'm the chairman. And I feel like there's been kind of a lull here in the last 30 days and prospects coming to meetings and, and potential members coming to the classification committee. So I just urge you all before the end of the year, we've got like eight meetings before the end of the year. Please, if you think of somebody that you think would make a good Rotarian, Please invite them to lunch. It's free. And we've got such a great club that we need to share it with other people. Thank you. I'm beyond thrilled to introduce Shannon Haru to Club 17. Shannon is a successful, motivated leader, um, an industry expert with over 30 years leading teams in the healthcare industry. Janin is Shannon is currently with Medical Mutual. She joined in 2021 as Vice President of Business and Market Development for Southwest Ohio. And uh, prior to that, so where Shannon and I met was when she was with Humana, and she had 20, over 20 years experience there. <laughs> Shannon's a graduate of Indiana Wesleyan University with a degree in business. She's also a 2007 graduate, graduate of Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber Sea Change Leadership Program. She's also had uh, completed other development courses through Humana Women in Leadership in 2012 and Development Acceleration Program in 2015. She's super involved in the community, giving back and supporting organizations like the American Heart Associations, uh, Mini Heart um, Half Marathon, Ronald McDonald House, Animal Adoption Foundation, and the Children's Home of Cincinnati. In her spare time, she enjoys golfing, hiking, biking, reading, traveling, and spending time with her family. Shannon and her husband, uh, Matt, they live in Green Township. Together they have three children, four grandchildren, and I'd like to welcome you to Rotary. Thank you. As Eric shared, next week, October 28th, Thursday, is Rotarians at Work. 
you may recall it was formally called uh, Vocational Fellowship Day. So this is a great time for our members to go out into the field. It's sort of like a mini roadshow. We meet in small groups. We really have a chance to get to know each other in ways that, you know, are kind of memorable and personal. And uh, I'm excited to say that we have seven different locations and we really tried to plan them throughout the greater Cincinnati area. Free parking, different locations. Uh, Kelly Crow and I are co-chairing. And I really encourage everybody to go out, bring a guest, bring a prospective member, spouse, a partner. It's just a great way to be together. So let me share the locations real quickly. Um, first off, the Hamilton County, Hamilton County Coroner's new building, very exciting, already sold out. It seems that the, those in the know who have been here a long time know how to sign up. Uh, of course, as Eric shared, we have a great opportunity here. You know, really, Rotary is about work. It's, a, it's about the careers that we have and how we can mentor the future generations. So, you know, in addition to public service, you know, wealth management, what a great way to build a career. And, you know, what a great way to bring in new Rotarians. So please join us at Journey Advisory Group just across the river. Erica will be a great host and you'll be better for it. Of course, Jack Scott's here in the audience. You know, Terracon Consultants, what a great company, celebrating their 100th anniversary year. They just remodeled their offices. And they're uh, pretty close over in the, right over by the, uh, the airport. Uh, Carnegie Center of Columbia Tusculum on Eastern Avenue. Great historical presentation, great building, great history, American Red Cross. Great location north of the city. And then we have a kind of a unique opportunity uh, right downtown here in Cincinnati on Dalton. We're going to talk about the future of work. We're going to talk about philanthropy. And I don't know if you've heard of the uh, Warehouse Collaborative, but it's a very unique location. Again, lots of parking. And finally, Lori Quinn Levin's going to do some light yoga in Mount Lookout. So join us. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Sounds very exciting. Make sure you sign up today to attend one of the Rotarians at Work location meetings uh, next week. So we will not be in, this, uh, in the Hilton in this room. Next week we will have our Rotarians at Work uh, and we will be back in the Hilton the following week. Now our announcements. We have several birthdays this week. Um, October 19th, if you're here, please stand when we call your name, and if you could just hold your applause until uh, I complete the list of names. October 19th, Marita Wade. Marita is probably on Zoom. She's our Zoom greeter. Um, October 19th, also Kelly Collison. October 20th, three birthdays uh, for October 20th, Janet Burns, Steve Scherzinger, Mary Smiley, Dave Ludke, lucky, and Dave Ludke is October 22nd, and October 23rd is Dave Carlin. Let's give them a round of applause for birthdays. <laughs> Next, we will have Split the Pot, and I will ask our guest speaker, uh, Brandon Reynolds to draw the ticket. If you will pull your tickets out, please. We will see who the winner is. Anyone can win the drawing for the initial, the initial drawing, and only Club 17 members are eligible for the, um, the accumulating pot. Brandon? The winning ticket gets $37 today and the accumulating pot is $831. You will be pulling for the Queen of Hearts. The last four digits are 1098. Ah! Congratulations! <laughs> Shannon. 
Shannon gets to draw. Pull for the Queen of Hearts for $831. Oh, Eight of Hearts. Well, we'll look forward to it next week. Um, next, uh, young professionals will have a happy hour coming up, so please join them November 4th from 4.30 to 6.30 at the Oakley Kitchen. They will be hosting this event, but all Rotarians are welcome and invited to attend. If you have any questions, please contact Wes Botto or Ed Mathis to RSVP. Are they here, Wes and Ed, if you could raise your hand so they can see who you are? Stand up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, YPs, for that. So let's support our YPs in, in their, uh, with their professional happy hour. Past President Director Jeannie Hayes will have a memorial that we will do for her here at Club 17. Um, she was a former executive director. That meeting will be held on November 11th, the Thursday. Her recognition will be held on that day. She was an executive director for 25 years for the Rotary Club of Cincinnati. She passed away during the pandemic in 2020, and uh, many of us uh, and President, past president Brett Labar represented our club at uh, the celebration of life for her. Um, and then this November 11th will be the first opportunity that our club will have the honor to commemorate her services with her family. So please join us on November 11th for that. Next, we will have, at this point, I will officially open the annual meeting for members. Our first and only order of business for this annual meeting will be the ratification of new club officers and directors for the 2023-22-23 year. Let me briefly review the process with you. Your board of directors through a nominating committee asks for nominees for board positions from any member of the club. Candidates may also nominate themselves. This year, more than 20 very talented candidates were considered for only five new officer and director positions. The nominating committee then presents its recommendations for new officers and directors to the club for its consideration. The board members discuss, consider the addition of any other candidates, and then vote uh, to approve the final slate. The board submits the new slate of officers and directors to the general membership for ratification, which is what we are doing today. Our goal is to have a board with the skills and leadership to serve our club well, and which also reflects the diversity of our club members. The diversity of our slate of candidates can vary widely from year to year. For example, last year the president, myself, and all three of the three-year term director candidates were women, whereas this year, all are men. But it's the composition of the total board which the nominating committee members <clears throat> keep in mind. The slate of new candidates when added to the board should continue to serve and will be comprised of our board beginning July 1, 2022 which reflects the gender, racial, and age diversity of our club. I now call on club member Mary Dornetti, part of the seven-person 2021 nominating committee, to first present and then move for ratification by the club members at this annual meeting the election of the proposed slate of new Rotary Club officers for the Rotary Club of Cincinnati effective July 1, 2022. Thank you, President Melinda. I am happy to report to our members the results of the nominating committee's work. In recent, seven, in recent months, seven of your fellow members met as a nominating committee to consider, discern, and nominate a proposed slate of candidates who we think would serve well as the future leadership of our club. 
The 2021 nominating committee for our club consisted of K.L. Allen, Mary Branstetter, President Melinda Kelly, President-elect Steve King, past President Brett Labar, as chair, Brian Vilhauer, and myself. Our proposed slate of new officers and directors for Rotary year 2022 and 2023, effective July 1st, 2022, was presented to the board in August. Then at the annual meeting of the club board in September, that slate of candidates was voted upon and approved by the current board. <clears throat> so now at this annual meeting of club members, I would like to present and then move for ratification the proposed slate of Rotary Club new officers and directors for Rotary year 2022-23, which the board has approved. First to present the candidates, would you please stand up in attendance? <clears throat> for proposed directors, we have for three-year terms, Ed Mathis, Bill Stilley, and Jeff Weir. For proposed officers, we have President nominee Doug Bolton, Sec Secretary Treasurer elect Wes Botto. <laughs> Additionally, on behalf of President Melinda, I'd like to report that the board voted to confirm the President elect Steve King remains the candidate for club president effective July 1st, 2022. Next, I would like to move for ratification this proposed slate of Rotary Club new officers and directors for Rotary year 2022-2023, and I'll turn this back over to President Melinda to conduct the ratification vote. Thank, thank you very much, Mary. Now we have a motion by Mary. Is there a second to Mary's motion? <laughs> there are about three or four seconds. Okay, thank you. Uh, any opposed? No? The ayes have it. The motion has been approved, and congratulations again to our new candidates. <laughs> Woohoo! I'd like to thank all of the club members who were nominated for their willingness to be considered for a board position to serve our club, and my thanks also to those who served on the nominating committee. Is there a motion to, clue, to uh, close the annual meeting? Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor, favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Next, we will have a World Affairs Committee report with Chuck Martz, Tony Otri, and John Farmeyer. Um, thank you, Melinda. President Melinda. Um, I am very happy to be representing the World Affairs Committee today. Um, and the first thing I want to do is just thank all of you for your past generous support. I mean, for uh, over 20 years now, the World Affairs Committee has been doing a lot of things out in the, the world and with international projects, but it's all driven by you and the support that you provide. You know, currently, we have three active projects. Uh, we have a Madagascar water project. We've got a Uganda solar project, and we also have a Ghana schools project. Now, to try and maximize our impact, maximize the impact you're giving, we always focus uh, our fundraising on one project each year. And this year, that is the Ghana schools project, and Tony Ocheri is going to uh, come up and spend uh, some time describing that to you. Uh, so that you have better activity and understanding. But just one quick second on what the World Affairs Committee is also doing to evolve. Um, we have formed a subcommittee and we're working on a couple of things. One is looking at how we get more impact in the Western Hemisphere so that we can be a little bit closer to home. We're also looking at how we can get more Rotarian engagement um, and also finally looking at better use of global grants and things that we can um, uh, expand your giving as we go ahead. So we're evolving and trying not to stand still. And then lastly, please plan on coming to our fundraising event on November 10th. Uh, we've got a great um, venue, we got great food, and we have an open bar. So that is every Rotarian's, you know, 
that's right. You've got it done. So with that dream, I will turn it over to uh, Tony. Thank you, Chuck. President Melinda, past president Brett, it is a pleasure to be here today uh, to all the Rotarians and those viewing by way of Zoom and our prospective Rotarians. Next slide, please. My husband sends his greetings. Uh, he is not able to be with us today, but my daughter agreed to tag team with me today. <clears throat> Alexia is a sophomore at the University of Cincinnati and the new co-president of the Cincinnati, University of Cincinnati uh, Rotaract Club. Please help me welcome her today. In the past three years, the Rotary Club of Cincinnati has made a significant impact on the students in Ghana. Today, we will, we will spotlight a few of the donations made by the Rotary Club of Cincinnati in collaboration with the Rotary Club of Deerfield Mason and Hillsborough. We have collectively distributed 3,500 textbooks for students, 229 wooden desks and a correction, 12 bookcases to store the books. All of the items were purchased in Ghana from local merchants. 25 indoor classrooms and five outside buildings were painted. Several classrooms had not been painted for over 70 years. As evidenced by the brief film presentation you will see shortly, these sustainable items will continue to benefit the community for many years to come. Next slide, please. Alexia. Hi, everyone. Alexia Archery here. President Melinda, thank you. Yes. Now you can be a part of a plan to put 5,000 textbooks in the classroom, 500 dual desks, and paint the interior and exterior of 10 school buildings across four schools, which will impact 1,200 Ghanaian students. I have had the opportunity to witness firsthand the impact that the Ghana Schools Project has had on the school children in Ghana. Coming from Cincinnati and Summit Country Day Schools, I've always had the resources at my disposal that I needed to learn and expand my knowledge, which gave me the choice of career which I've chosen in medicine. Unfortunately, many schools in Ghana do not have the resources to give their students the opportunities that they deserve. With the aid of the Ghana Schools Project, throughout the many years we've sponsored schools in Ghana, especially the past three years through the aid of Rotary, I have seen a dramatic increase in attendance, GPAs, enrollment, and the overall edification of the students at Bissancy Junior High School. The most impressive achievement was the fact that 98% of the students who completed the basic education certificate examination, similar to an ACT or SAT, passed with flying colors, a never before seen statistic, opening the door to their choice of career. Through your continued support in 2021-22, of now over 1,200 students across four different schools, I believe we can make an even greater impact and open the door to educational opportunities that would ne otherwise be near impossible. Please direct your attention to now a three-minute video presentation followed by pres past president of the Rotary Foundation and current co-chair of the World Affairs Committee, John Farmeyer, who will speak briefly about how you can make a direct difference in these students' lives. Christy, on to the video presentation. <laughs> as we also was under this uh, teaching environment. So now the children they have books 
to read the teachers they have reference material to use in the classroom. So nowadays, when teachers go to the classroom, each of the child gets one book. One people, one book. Provide us with and to share by providing us with we will be able to make the country to run in our country. It is one also see me, I go, no, no. It is one also see me, I did. It's me 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 All right, very good, very good. Uh, thank you, Tony and Alexia. Where's Alexia? Out there, all right. Very, very, very nice presentation. Uh, and it's an informative and compelling story. I look forward to hearing more at the fundraising event uh, next month on November 10th. Thank you, fellow Rotarians. You have a long history of supporting both the local and the international service projects we have endeavored over the years. When you were walking in today, you saw a PowerPoint slideshow on the screen highlighting the various successes we have had with our international projects. Thanks very much uh, to Dr. Charles Pierce for much of this presentation. Is, where is Charles? There he's back there with Alexia. Thank you very much. From loading shipping containers to funding health clinics, solar installations, or water and sanitation projects, Cincinnati Rotarians have always risen to the occasion with both their hearts and their pocketbooks. I'm now asking you again for your financial gifts. You have generously supported the Ghana Schools Project in the past. Let's do so again in 2021. As Tony and Alexia presented, your dollars will clearly benefit young students in Ghana in an effective and a proven manner. You will learn more if you join us for the World Affairs Committee fundraising event we are holding again on November 10th. Um, and that is gonna be a nice venue right downtown here, uh, and it's held at six o'clock. But if you're unable to make it that evening, we encourage gifts to the project now or anytime soon. The goal for the Ghana Schools Project this year is an ambitious one, $40,000. But a, decade, but a decade ago, when I last asked Rotarians to support an international project, you responded with more than that amount. Let's do it again, right? Can I get a yes? Yes, yes all right. Well, hey, thank you very much. And uh, again, uh, we have some flyers, looks like. Uh, so Linda, you wanna pass the, raise your hand if you'd like to see those, have them. All righty. Well, I'll move on because I'm wearing another hat here. Uh, let, me, let me do a little turn. 
I am shifting gears now uh, to introduce our speaker of the day. Um, we were originally going to have a more internationally focused main speaker today, but sometimes with Rotor you just have to roll with the punches, right? I think you will really enjoy today's uh, presentation by Brandon Reynolds, a.k.a. Be the Keeper. His story reflects the combination of interests and passions, from helping gr growing businesses in advertising to selling sustainability. Brandon has focused on beekeeping for the last several years. He is a UC marketing graduate and now works with local businesses and landowners to install pollinator habitats in urban areas. This is sustainability in action. Please give a warm Cincinnati Ro Rotary welcome to Brandon Reynolds. Thank you, John, Chuck, and Madam President, and Christy, I love you. Um, thanks again for having me today. Um, very interesting, last night I got a text, I was painting some cabinets, and I get a text from one of my first bosses after I graduated from UC, so Alexia, um, fellow Bearcat, and it said, looking forward to seeing you at Rotary tomorrow. And it blew me away because up to this point, the only Rotarian I knew was my friend Nathan Thomas, um, who I believe is, is involved with uh, solar panels in Uganda. And, and so th this is really um, serendipitous as it goes today. And it's funny because Reed's not a Rotarian. His wife, Angie Fisher, is a Rotarian. So Reed is an honorary Rotarian. But this was when I was in advertising. Give it up for Reed, everybody. <laughs> Since this is lucky day. Uh, when I was in advertising, which is um, the industry that I got into right after I graduated from UC in 2015, Reed was one of my first bosses. And when I say bosses, it means he was really high up and I brought him paperwork to sign. Okay? Um, but one lesson that he taught me when, during my first year was this concept called scorched earth policy. And I know that sounds weird coming from an environmentalist, scorched earth policy, because that's something we're trying to prevent. But what scorched earth policy means is you, you pull out all the stops, you give everything you got to solve a problem, to make a change, to create a difference in an issue or a community that you care about. And so that's why I think it's very serendipitous, uh, very good word, um, that you know, Reed and Angie are here today because advertising and, and finding a way to advertise sustainability to get people to think more mindfully about the environment is really what we do at Be The Keeper. So um, I'm really excited to share some more with you, and I hope you like the logo, because these two over here made it. Um, <laughs> so let's go on to that, the next slide here. Or it's, it's actually a PDF, so uh, don't yell at me. So the biggest thing at Be The Keeper, uh, we always start with mission and vision first, very simple. It's to, uh, it's to create safe spaces for pollinators. And so we're really focused, and a safe space could be a conversation, it could be a pollinator habitat, it could be a class. There's so much that you can do with it. Uh, we just so happen to right now focus primarily on bee-friendly, pollinator-friendly uh, landscaping. And our vision is to really take what we're doing here in Cincinnati and take it to the tri-state and even further beyond. Because, you know, many of you know native landscapes exist all across the country and there are bees all across the country. And it just so happens that they share the same food supply as many other hundreds of species of pollinators that go to birds and, and even butterflies. It's a very shared network. And so um, to go on to the next piece, our punchline is really that we work with businesses specifically and landowners to plant pollinator habitat in urban spaces. But that's not just putting nice flowers in a garden. There's a lot of benefits, and this is really where we get people. Um, when you think of a business, it's just like, let's say, business surrounded by grass. And I'm not an enemy of grass, okay? But it takes a lot of resources to maintain. You got to water it, you got to mow it, you got to seed it, you got to straw it, you got to put in some... Uh, you gotta, what is it, spurt, fertilize it? You got to blow the leaves off of it. I mean, we can keep on going. And while you're micromanaging to keep this uh, ongoing aesthetic, like a helicopter parent, it's not really doing much. I really sound like I don't like grass. <laughs> you're not really doing much to really reinforce your brand and, and, and especially actually create a more renewable landscape that feeds um, not only your sustainability mission, but the surrounding ecosystem. So when we go to a company and we say, they say, hey, why should we even hire you guys? Don't you just do bees? Um, the biggest thing is when you take up that grass or that inactive landscape that's traditionally been treated as a liability, um, when you convert into this asset um, that reinforces a, a company's sustainability commitment, the first thing is, hey, you know, you spend all this carbon trying to keep this thing together. Let's put in some bee-friendly plants that, you know, continually get bigger and bigger, absorbing carbon every year, 
and you actually end up using less carbon and less fertilizers to, to keep this thing together because the, the environment that we create through these habitats actually just grows bigger and bigger and feeds more pollinators. And which also goes to the second point is it looks really cool. If any of you have ever been to the Crone Conservatory, you know what flowers look like. I'm sure that we can all agree that we love flowers in here, right? And then the third is, um, you know, like we said before, you're taking this landscape that was previously inactive and it's also um, serving now as an ecosystem that feeds that hundreds of species of pollinators. So it just so happens that while we're focusing, you know, while our roots were in honeybees, it just so happens that you don't have to even have a beehive on a property. You can have an acre of pollinator habitat or less, you know, depending on the size, and that will feed many different species of bees, many different species of hummingbirds, and many species of butterflies. And don't forget the beetles, but you know, I know um, many people don't think of beetles in like a very positive light. But all of these, 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 these insects that really keep our ecosystems together and help us maintain um, our lives today. So going into our next thing, just to kind of get your blood flowing here, we'll have to go into some da 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 bee trivia. First question is, how long do you guys think bees live? Just yell out something. Two days, two weeks, 90 days, nine months. That's very, very key. Who said that? Well, that's, that's, that's I'm, unfortunately, that is incorrect. But um, it's actually very interesting. Honeybees, we're talking specifically honeybees right now. Um, during the summer months, they live between like, you know, five and seven weeks because they're just grinding, flying themselves to death, just trying to bring back resources for the colony. But right now, the bees are going through this... Uh, they're changing their biology um, so they can actually last through winter so they have more fat cells and they can go from between four to six months. So it actually changes um, as the years go on. Next question. Um, are bees and wasps the same thing? I know you all been wondering. No, they're actually cousins. Everybody's, uh, you know, thinks that they're the same, especially after this year, there's so many yellow jackets, but they're actually cousins. And while wasps are a little bit more scary than bees, they're actually very uh, key to maintaining, you know, they lower the pest population. Um, so if you've got a garden and you want to have a lot of kale or whatever you're growing, tulips, whatever, um, you are not tulips, let's say, uh, what is it, kale and tomatoes? Um, you want to actually have a healthy wasp population to keep all of those worms away or the, you know, like the cabbage worms and the pests that really stop you from eating. Third question. This is a question that I don't want you to answer, but I want you to think about. And it's, it, what does save the bees mean to you? Because it's a very popular hashtag now, but what does that mean? Does that mean more beehives? Does that mean more honey? Does that mean more pollinator habitat? It's a very key question to consider because bees, as you know, are responsible not only for our food supply, but for the food supply of many of the species that make our ecosystem whole. And our fourth bonus question is, somebody tell me what are bees' favorite shape? Circle, hexagon. I had somebody say pentagonal last week when I was at XU giving a, giving a talk, a circle and a hexagon. Um, but it's very interesting is that the hexagon is obviously one of the strongest, uh, you know, structures that we can find in nature. It's very stable. You can hold 10 pounds of honey just on some wax. And so a lot of times you think, oh, bees, they're very, uh, you know, they're these alien species. They're bugs. They're lesser than us. But it's very interesting that they can create this strong structure with their faces in a hive um, made of wax that they create themselves, and it turns out to be one of the strongest configurations in nature. So I think that there's a lot that we can learn from the bees in that regard. And so the next slide, this is, uh, this is actually our first installation at St. Xavier High School. From a landscaper perspective, we like to call this a blank slate because it's just a bunch of grass, and you literally would mow it, and you'd walk past in two seconds, wouldn't even think about it. But if you go to the next slide, this was last year in May. This is now huge. These are all babies. These are toddler plants. You go there now, you've got, you know, plants that are the six feet tall that have been bursting in yellow since July. I mean, it's a very beautiful installation. And this is very key because, like I said, I came from advertising. And you know, what are the three most important words in advertising? Location, location, location. And so this here is put at the front of the school. And so this is, 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 a, is my favorite installation because every single student, 1,500 students go there every year and think about their parents, think about people going to football games, think about faculty, staff. They have to drive past this. This is St. X's sustainability commitment here. They have to drive past this thing every single day 
to inter interact with the school. And so this is, like we say, advertising and location. Be the keeper is not just landscaping. The B and be the keeper, while you think it might be B as Brandon or B as B's, the biggest thing about be the keeper is brand. And this is a shining example of St. X's brand and how they care about not only just being men for others, that's their motto, in terms of people, it's men for other species and, and, and caring for pollinators that actually keep us around. So isn't that pretty cool? So um, are, there any, are there any bombers out there? Oh. Are there any bombers out there? Nobody from St. X? Okay, so we'll, we'll definitely have to bond. Um, I think next I've got a couple pictures just to sort of, you know, give you, um, oh, this is really cool. Sam, Sincere, Meg. Um, these are two students on the left and their biology teacher at St. X. And this is really cool because even Sam here, he's holding up some Leatris, never seen that or heard of that plant in his life. But it was interesting. We were at St. X last week doing some beekeeping and um, the Cincinnati Enquirer was there taking some snaps. And, you know, Sam's giving, you know, talking about his story and he was able to see that something he planted last May is now covered in bees. So for him, think about a student that's 17 trying to learn about sustainability and then to see something that he actually did put in the ground, it, 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 it's, it's actually fulfilling the, the, the green lifestyle that he's been wanting since he was a freshman. So this is, this is a really cool um, picture for me because it's just showing people, humans, actually caring about the environment through their actions. And I think the next couple of pictures, uh, Christy, you can even slide through these a little sl really slow. Um, you can just see so much life that's brought to these landscapes, not only just from color, not only just from the carbon that they're sucking up to grow, but just from the different species that you see call these places home. And so the question I have for you, or I guess this is more of a statement, I think uh, let's, let's do an example here. Um, I was going to pick on Shannon um, earlier, but let's pick on Madam President. Let's say if we were married, which is probably not a pleasant thought for you, um, <laughs> but if, if somebody were to say, hey, Brandon, uh, how's your relationship? And I were to say, eh, it's sustainable. <laughs> you'd, probably, you'd probably slap me in the face, you know? You know, when we talk about going even further beyond sustainability, you want to create an environment that's more so renewable, right? What if somebody says, hey, um, Melinda, I'd probably say this about you, but... Um, our relationship is something that's renewable. It gives me life. It makes me more creative. It makes me want to be more involved in my community. Isn't that a better story? And so when, when, we, when we talk about, you know, sustainability, I'm not saying don't use the buzzword. I mean, I'm sure all of you, you who are smarter than me, who have been having meetings on Thursdays for, consistently for 100 years, okay, are way smarter than me. But, <laughs> but really it's just you want to create this renewable, you know, atmosphere that people can tap into. I think that's a very big mental shift from simply just thinking of even keel. Um, does that make sense for everybody? And so I think I got one more slide and this is really key and this is one big thing that I've learned from um, Reed and Angie. I'm gonna stop picking on you but I love you guys to, to the core is empathy, right? I'm a beekeeper. I left advertising, I started keeping bees and I found out if you wanna be a keeper, you know, somebody that's creating a renewable relationship between you know, the environment and yourself, and your friends and your community, all that. Um, the biggest thing is, is you, you gotta have a lot of empathy, right? Because you know, when we go into a business or, or a homeowner's place and they say, hey, how can we do this? Um, am I still good on time? Okay, I think I got like five minutes. Um, when, question time in a second, okay, this is my last one. Um, they say, how do we get in? You know, we don't know where to start. And so a lot of times with sustainability, you'll get somebody that's never planted a garden before and then they'll talk to somebody and it says, hey, we're gonna show you how to create this edible food forest and you know, you're gonna be growing all your food. It's, it's very intimidating. It's like going from never shooting a basketball before to LeBron James. You, you know, how do you get from that zero to 60? It's very tough and takes a lot of energy. Whereas what we're doing um, through our work is creating, you know, hey, how can I take you from step one to three or step three to six? You know, how do I get you to take these baby steps into sustainability so like Sam or Sincere, you can eventually be growing your own seeds or you can create your own pathway into creating a more renewable um, environment. So this is a very key element, and um, I think it's finding places to connect with people as opposed to you know, trying to boil the ocean with a Bunsen burner. Um, I think my last slide is next. Um, final thoughts, I usually give this to uh, high school students, um, but I think it's, you know, this is stuff that you've already learned, and I think for me it's, you, know, you always wanna be yourself, be resilient, and be present. A lot of times I tell, you know, students, 
the biggest thing for you all these days is that nobody's paying attention. You all got your hand in your phone and or your, your face in your phone that's in your hand and you're not really paying attention to your environment. But like that installation at St. X, you used to go from spending two seconds walking across it to spending an hour looking at monarch butterflies lay eggs or look at their chrysalis and, and, and seeing their, a life cycle. And so I think that for all of you, I would really just encourage you, you know, whether you're gonna become a beekeeper or you're gonna find some way to take plastic from the oceans and create roofs in a foreign country or something, you know, whatever your, your step into your, create, your creativity is, I just encourage all of you to continue pushing it, um, whether it's with yourselves or the mentors that you have, because you never know where you'd end up. And so with that, I think I got my last slide. Hopefully this was interesting. I tried to cram it down in 15 minutes before Christy kicked me off here. I know you got the gavel. But I want to say uh, thank you all for having me today. Um, if any of you actually um, are interested in, um, you know, like many of the other projects that you have across the world, folks in a little bit here on Cincinnati and, and, and creating a safe space for pollinators, you know, let's definitely connect because um, I think that we have a lot of common in common with our our relatives in the bee world. So thank you, and I'll take, a, I'll take a few questions. I think we got four minutes. You okay? All right, anybody got any hard questions? You in the back. And, um, I think people need to get over the pesticide issue. Yes. Quit using them. There's nothing wrong with you said for chard and kale that have some holes in it. We've been eating it for 20 years. We're still alive. And people need to get off the pesticides and we quit killing all the bees. Hey, and I love that statement. And um, because it's very interesting, we talk about uh, empathy, right? Um, when you see somebody spraying pesticides or stuff for mosquitoes, I'm not going to, you know, name any names of any custom, you know, companies, but, you know, they're usually wearing a gas mask because they don't want it to go in their lungs. And they're wearing gloves and stuff, right? So if you think about it, the humans aren't really trying to get in touch with this stuff. And if you think about what they're spraying it on, you know, bees, all these, these, these organisms live in the ground, right? And they don't really have a choice. They can't put on a gas mask. They can't put on, you know, gloves. But they're bathing in the stuff that they're spraying. So if you, if you have an empathetic point of view like you have, um, it's, hey, how can, we, 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 how, do, how can we maintain this aesthetic in our yard or on our property without, you know, hurting our, uh, our, our co, you know, what is it, what is it, um, our roommates, in, in the process. So thank you for that. That's very key. What's your name? Don? Don. Pleasure to meet you. Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for this wonderful talk. I have a question about uh, individual pollinator gardens. Yes, ma'am. Do they need to be networked kind of in a corridor or is it all, all right to have them here and there? Very cool. Um, both. That's a, that's a yes and um, answer. Because, you know, it'd be great to have a pollinator. Like, one of my big goals for next year, uh, we're going to try, we're doing a small project starter point this, this uh, fall or winter, November, whatever that is in Cincinnati, um, is we're going to start working on, you know, some highways, like do a little highway strip of prairie, right? And, of course, it'd be great to do a long, from here to Columbus, to have places where pollinators can, you know, rest and go along. Because, you know, the monarchs, they come from up here and they go down to, like, Mexico, right? Um, but also, I think, like we said before, having a small spot, feeds a ton of species because some bees they only go a few hundred hundred feet to get food so i would say both work but um it would be great to have both but if you can only start off with a pocket prairie um that's a great place to start um next question i think we only got one more right before i get yelled at all right yes we and we can talk because after a while you kind of like the feeling um and that's that's what do you say oh okay here's your last question Yes, sir. Who's going to sponsor you to be a member of the Rotary Club? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I hopefully, um, I, I'm going to get my, my audit when I sit down here to find out if this presentation was good enough. But um, right. <laughs> um, I too. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brandon, for that very energetic, informative, and instructional presentation. Before you sit down. In honor of your presentation today, and we're so glad you're here, we will give a donation to the Rotary International for the eradication of polio in your name, Brandon Reynolds. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. That's, that's incredible. Wow. And we also have a Rotary pin for you for our model this year is Serve to Change Lives. So here is your first Rotary pin. Wow. Well, even I got the B on there, so I did that. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. The last uh, thing I'd like to mention before we end today is World Polio Day. One day, one focus, ending polio. You can visit endpolio.org, the website, and also go on the Rotary Inf International page. There's a lot of information on end polio. World Polio Day is October 24th. It's Sunday. As global health experts and partners share our progress on the road to polio eradication. And that's why we're really uh, excited to give that donation in your name, Brandon, for the eradication of polio. So thanks to all of the members who purchased the purple, pinky donuts that you will be receiving. Uh, thank you very much for that and for the awareness and the campaign, also for the work for uh, Dr. Hux Miller and all of the hands-on service committee volunteers for delivering the donuts. So thank you very much from the office staff. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't just give another welcome shout out actually to Linda and Christy for the Large Club Conference last week. And all of our members, we had drivers. Uh, if, you're in, if you're in the audience and you were, did, had anything at all to do with the Large Club Conference, please stand. Please stand, anybody. And the rest of you, stand anyway. Just stand for Club 17. But thank you very much. We've received numerous um, correspondences, cards, emails, texts from our guests, some who plan to come back and visit our club, a few who were so excited about being in Cincinnati and the Bearcats, they called home, told their spouses, their spouses flew in and they went to the Bearcat game on Saturday. Um, so we've had, um, I've had communications with people from California. Also, I'll say this too, we are Club 17. In our midst last week, we had Club 1 from Chicago. We had Club 3, Oakland, California. We had LA 5. So we had a lot of members from around the United States in our presence last week, and we received positive comments, and that was attributed to all to you, Club 17, for making it welcoming to them. So thanks to each of you. Uh, next week, again, we will have Rotarians at work. As you heard the announcement with uh, Rashardi, Anthony Rashardi, and we're looking forward to visiting the sites. This afternoon, we have two meetings. We have our board meeting that will be in the Julep Room, and we also have the Rotaract Committee, which will be held in, that meeting will be held in boardroom three on the mezzanine level. So thank you so very much. Make it a great day. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>